Senator Cadell, you have the call. Um, I want to go back to vaping, if I can. Um, I think probably, Mr Skerritt, is it still the advice to government that nicotine vaping products should not be sold in Australia except through prescription? Uh, yes, it is, Senator. Thank you very much. Um, I come from a, from a different point of view. I am a non-smoker, never smoked a thing, don't do it, uh, have advocated against big uh, tobacco donations. I heard this, this research about, that I think, uh, Senator Canavan, over 90% of people vaping in Australia are not doing so through legal means or having had trouble believing mm. that. Do you, once again, you think that's a possible number? You won't speak, you haven't seen numbers, but is that possible? I think it is quite possible because it is very easy for people to uh, break the law. And the question is, uh, how can the system be strengthened so that our children and young people don't get access to nicotine vaping substances? Okay. Do you accept that all of two of the OEC nations have legalised and regulated tobacco vape, uh, vaping products um, without for sale, without prescription? Uh, that is a fact, and I think Australia should be very proud of what we have done in vaping, the same way we should be very proud with what we've done in plain packaging of tobacco. What information do we have that these other nations, including New Zealand, which regulated in February, don't have to base this, this decision? I think we are in a situation where, in some of these other countries, the horse has bolted, and uh, the impact on youth vaping rates and on smoking rates uh, is evidence. Uh, I was recently in the US with US FDA and uh, their tobacco centre is, is essentially playing catch up to a system where they've had an explosive increase in the number of young people vaping. And now by trying to almost in retrospect uh, regulate products on the market and take products off the market that, for example, may be particularly attractive to young people, uh, they are playing catch up, but uh, they're also caught up in the courts with that. Mr. Skerr, is it your testimony that the horse hasn't bolted in Australia? 90, over 90% 90 of users do so illegally. I'll, I'll get the point, Madam Chair. I know no one in Canberra, I've been here for three months. 10 kilometres from here in 10 minutes today, I was able to buy a nicotine vaping product yep. without knowing anyone. The horse has bolted. You surely can't so, say it hasn't. Hmm. No, I think that uh, the government uh, is currently considering what they can do to uh, uh, manage this problem for our, for our children and young people. So we could put up white flag and give up, but I don't think uh, that that is uh, the view of the government. But we aren't, I'll put another point. My son, 16 years old, president of his SRC, Lachlan, his brother, 13 years old in the SRC, they are fundraising to try and buy vape detectors for their bathrooms because it is rampant in their school. They can't stop it. It, it is too mm. late to lock the gate on this. You're saying we got in early. We haven't, surely. I, I disagree that it's too late to lock the gate. If we give up like that on, on all matters to do with public health, Australia would still have the smoking rates, for example, that we had in the 1970s. If we make it financially viable to do illegal acts and create illegal activity in Australia, Surely they will not care if they sell it to kids, if they sell it to people, or what they do. Is that not right? Well, there needs to, there needs to be mechanisms whereby those breaking the law can be more readily detected, and uh, it is practically harder for people to put out uh, vaping products. So, for example, we have vaping products at the moment with rainbows and unicorns on them that surely appeal to adolescents. Do we need to have something that's a prescription medicine with rainbows and unicorns? What are the sorts of things that, that, are, that are being looked at? I had a choice of purple haze, berry uh, blast, melon madness, bliss berry, You've melon heaven, pink lemonade today. It's surely... Well, should we have flavoured products? These are things that need to be considered and consulted on publicly. OK, I take that. Because now, they do attract young people, those flavoured products. Have young adults or children died or suffered serious health effects with vaping in Australia? There have been uh, poisonings of toddlers uh, it, due to nicotine vaping products. There is evidence, and again, uh, I know that there are various studies on their way to being reported, of respiratory and psychological and other impacts on, on teenagers and youth with the vaping. I think it would be dangerous to assert that these are harmless products. In fact, uh, there's been a fair bit of media from parents and from the children themselves indicating that nicotine is not a benign substance. Do we think the that these babies and young adults are getting prescriptions and buying this from New, uh, New Zealand legally? No, they're getting it, as you say, from uh, tobacconists, from convenience stores, uh, 
over the internet to various mechanisms. And the question is, how do we enable people who appropriately want to use nicotine vaping products under their doctor's supervision for smoking cessation, but stop our children and, 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 and young people gaining access to them because of the damaging effects of nicotine on, on developing adolescents? Mr. Skerritt, I am not pro-vaping. I am bad, uh, anti-bad laws. This law has failed. This law is failing. It is time to look at other solutions. I accept that there are other, you know, we'll talk about looking at what the new government will do, looking at tightening up this stuff. But if this situation exists in the next six and 12 months after this change, will you commit to reviewing, looking at regulation in Australia <coughs> so these products, as harmful as they may be, can be regulated in a more effective way and constrained through better retailers than they are now? Well, if they are prescription medicine, it's inappropriate for a retailer to produce them. You don't go to a 7-Eleven okay. to, to get uh, morphine, for example. I do give my absolute commitment that uh, we are looking at better regulation of these products because the regulation certainly needs to be improved. It's not good enough now. And that is what's before government for decision on what to consult on. OK, I urge you to just think... Of, uh, it's personal experience and everything like that. I couldn't believe I could get this so quickly. So thank you for your time. Yeah, uh, I agree. I could get it in 10 minutes. I, I agree with you, Sam. Oh, this is Canberra. Who knows what we could get now? But here, anyway, thank you. Yeah. <laughs>